born in Madrid, Spain. Uh, my father's family was originally French, but my mother's family was Spanish. Uh, I went to a French school in Madrid, and then I became, I started to be a civil engineer. Uh, my main motivation at that time was that uh, we had a pretty famous uh, civil engineer in Spain, structural engineer, Torroja, who did lots of bridges at one time, a world record bridge, uh, and shared roofs and things like that. And I was excited about the idea of saying, well, one day I'll be able to go around and point to a building or a bridge and say, that's my way. So I did my studies in Spain, and then I worked for a number of years in a construction firm, uh, and then I applied for a Fulbright scholarship, and I was sent to MIT. Wow. Uh, so I went there originally for one year, and then I stayed, got my PhD there, and then I stayed as a faculty member there. Sure. Well, first I was I was a student member. Sure. Uh, then I started attending technical conferences and presenting papers. Then I joined both the engineering mechanics division and the structure division. Uh, I was in several committees, technical committees of both. Then at one time I was in management group B, mm -hmm. uh, okay. and so on. Well, the, the, the engineering schools in Spain were created following the French tradition, where, where they were special schools, oh, separate okay. from the university. Uh, the civil engineering school in Spain was probably the first one of them that was established in 1802 or something like that. Wow. Uh, and was established by someone who had studied at a French school in Paris. Oh, Paris, yeah. <laughs> uh, he then went to create a school in St. Petersburg. Oh, wow. The engineering school in St. Petersburg. Uh, but these were separate, and, and each one was financed and run by a different department of the government. Of the government, okay. So civil engineering was run by public works and so on. Uh, and then there was a lot of complaints about people at the university that we were getting more money, <laughs> more privileged. So yeah. then they decided to merge it into the university. Okay. In Spain, do they have a civil engineering uh, or an engineering society? Yes. Yes. We, we have, there is, it's a little bit misleading because there is an association of civilian engineers, not civil engineers. Oh, Although civilian. It's, it's translated, they said it's civil, but it's really civilian. And then there is a college of civil engineers, and the college of civil engineers is the one that is related and in contact with ASCE. They're yeah. the ones who are the civil engineers. Well, now along the way, um, you, when you were uh, in Madrid, you said you met your wife there, yes. and uh, she's she's American. Yes. Now, uh, can you explain? Can you tell? Share us a little bit about that. Uh, well, she was she was uh, at Millbury College at that time, and but she went for a year abroad with uh, New York University. So she was for one year studying there, and I met her, <laughs> and then, and then mm -hmm. she wanted to finish college before getting married. So that's yeah. when I came to the United States. To the United States, okay. I've done a lot of work in things related to earthquake engineering. I've done a lot uh -huh. of work on earthquake engineering. And then I've done work related to soil structure interaction, dynamic mm -hmm. soil structure interaction, fluid structure interaction. I did some work related to offshore platforms because mm -hmm. of that. Uh, stability, things like that in general. Non-destructive testing. Where did you do your dissertation on? I did my dissertation on random vibrations of an elastoplastic system. <laughs> wow. It had to do with earthquake engineering. With earthquake I mean. engineering, okay. There may have been a particular professor or associate colleague that really had a had an influence on your yeah. your career. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Well, I, I would start with a professor of math in school. Yeah. And then, of course, I had this civil engineer very famous in Spain. I was a structural engineer. And then when I was at MIT, I had um, three very, very good teachers in structures, uh, Hansen, Hall, and Biggs, I really admired, and one tremendous person in geotechnical engineering, that was Robert Whitman, Bob Whitman. Bob Whitman, okay. Uh, then I've had many others, I mean, I had people that were not necessarily in my same university that had helped me tremendously, people like uh, Andy Valetsos at Rice, and George Hausner at Caltech, uh, Ray Clough and Joe Penzina at Berkeley, uh, really outstanding individuals. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I went to Austin for a visit, a week after the blizzard of 78, oh, when wow. we were under house arrest basically for a whole week. For a whole week. Over yeah. uh, and I got to Austin and it was 70 degrees and blue skies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's and that, of course, was, was a plus. Uh, but then the, the main thing, perhaps, is that uh, at MIT, MIT is a fantastic place. It's a fantastic place to be in. Uh, but we were all theoretical. 
and I was working in problems that, that needed some very exper experimental verification. Uh, and it was all theoretical. At UT Austin, they were doing a lot of experimental work. And more of it was... And they needed some more help in, in theory. So, uh, so I felt I was going to fit very well in there. I, so I really more, more applied? Right. More applied, okay. So I, that, that's, that's, uh, there was also a motivation to go there. Sure. Well, I, I think the most important thing is that you're not going to be attracted, as in my case, uh, to build special structures because nobody does a big structure by himself. Now it's always sure. things. Uh, however, I think at this moment in history, civil engineers are so important to mankind. I mean, the, the social, the problems that we have in society, social needs, are all related to things that have to be solved by civil engineers. Yeah. Water, transportation, energy, th these are our basic needs, and, and only civil engineers are going to solve them. So it's a tremendous opportunity to do something which is vital to mankind, sure. uh, to society. Yeah. And that is rewarding. You're doing something that you can feel I'm, I'm contributing to the world. Yeah. I, I would like to retire mostly to be able to do other things. Sure. But I must say that I'm really enjoying myself very, very much. I always enjoyed very much teaching. I, I like teaching very much. And I think one of the tremendous benefits of teaching is that you're constantly with young people, with young people. And yeah. that keeps you young. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, that keeps you young. But uh, the main thing is that I'm, I'm having so much fun now here. Sure. Um, I'm treated very well. We have a fantastic head of the department. We have fantastic deans. So I, I'm really enjoying myself. <laughs> but I would like to say two things for the young people. One is do something that you enjoy doing. Sure. When you get into something, some area of study, whether it's make sure that it's something that you enjoy. What you don't want to do in your life is get up every day saying, oh, heck, I have to go to work. <laughs> yeah. has to be something that you enjoy. Uh, and the second thing is there seems to be a belief out there that uh, people with a PhD that's just to do research, very basic research, and so on. Uh, no, that's not the case necessarily. I'm not trying to say that everybody should get a PhD. We need very sure. much just practicing engineers. <laughs> Yeah. On the other hand, getting a PhD does not mean necessarily that you're going to be working abstract research. It means that you're going to be learning more and try to do some research. I, that was my case. I wanted to be a practicing engineer and do structures. Once I went to MIT and I started working in research projects, I got excited about doing research and finding new things and solving new problems. Yeah. So don't give it up. <laughs> try it. Just, just hang in there. Yeah. Okay.